Lounge and Sun. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast. My name is Ryan, and I got my co-host, the Dillbot. Hey. Today we are going to be talking about Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, part of the Marvel Color Series, I guess you could call it, where they did Daredevil Yellow, Hulk Gray, Captain America White, and Spider-Man Blue, which is what we'll be talking about today. The, the Color Series has always been, they've always been some of my favorite Marvel stories. Obviously a huge Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale fan from Long Halloween, Dark Victory, stuff like that, Superman for all seasons. So Dylan hadn't read Spider-Man Blue, so I thought, you know, this would be a cool one to read. I was actually thinking about it. There's actually, like, a lot of Spider-Man that I haven't read. I I've, I've read, like, a lot of, like, core stuff, but I feel like Clone Saga left me jaded. I, I Yeah, I, I don't blame you for feeling that way. You know, when you came into the shop the other day and you asked Nick to come on the show... And fucking you, asshole. And, and you said you were gonna <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I mean I laughed. I was like, hey, that was kinda good. You know, like it's kinda funny. He's like, Dylan wasn't mad, right? I'm like, dude, we work in kitchens. That, that was like I was like, that's fucking mild what you said to him. Like yeah. that's that's like the least of, of your worries, you know? No, um, no, I wasn't mad I was at like, all. Actually, that was a really good zinger from Nick because like my, my experiences with Nick before, he ne- he's never he's never slung any zingers at me. So that was a good one. I think me working with him has kind of uh I, I could be wrong, but I feel like he he's a uh, quick with him now, to, more so than since I started working there. You know, and it's probably because I'm constantly yeah. <laughs> throwing them at him. Uh, but I thought it was funny too. Like he told us to pick a book, right? And you're like the Clone Saga, and he did, <laughs> and he didn't hear you. So when he left, I was like, I was like, dang, dude, I can't believe you fucking, I can't believe you talk shit to Dylan, dude. Like that's fucked up. And he's like, <laughs> and then he's like, wait, was he mad? And that that's when that whole conversation. I was like, no, dude, that wasn't mad. And I'm like, but you know we're going to do the Clone Saga for the episode you're on. <laughs> and he just looked at me. I was like, I'm fucking with you, bro. We're not. We're not gonna <laughs> but speaking of Clone Saga, real quick, I've been missing Spider-Man, you know? Me and, too. And, like, I, I miss Spider-Man too. Like I said, like, yeah. um, the, the stories I have read, I love, like, you know, freaking Maximum, Maximum Carnage, obviously. Back in Black, when uh, this is at the, during and after the whole Civil War thing was a good oh, one. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, the other, I love the other. That shit was dope. Like th- uh, there has been like really good like Spider-Man stories I've read, but I feel like I've missed out on a lot as well. Right, so, right. Yeah. So I mean, as of today, like when we're talking, Mario and I did a video, the best uh, in our opinion, best modern day Spider-Man stories oh, nice. slash runs. So that'll be going up. But the reason I, I I'm talking about how much I miss Spider-Man is I I ordered from my comic shop dot com. Because, you know, they have an extensive back issue catalog. And uh, all of our talk about the Clone Saga last week, I fucking, <laughs> I fucking ordered, uh, <laughs> I ordered, uh, so Scarlet Spider, Spider Comics, <laughs> I ordered, like, the fucking number ones from when they, when they retitled it, or they, you know, they did Web of Scarlet Spider, yeah, Scarlet yeah, yeah, Spider, yeah, 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 yeah. so I ordered the first issues of those. And then I also ordered Sensational Spider-Man when Ben oh, nice. Riley when Ben Riley was in there. I ordered a couple of the uh, Ringo issues, the Mike oh, Waringo wow. issues, because I used to read. Or I had I read that when I was younger. I didn't have all the comics, so I just bought a few of those and then some more Spider Girl stuff. But the Ringo Spider-Man stuff, like I love Ringo. He yeah. illustrated my first comic book I ever read. You know, yeah. so like I've always really been attached to his art. So yeah, I don't know. I just. <laughs> but I, I'm probably going to put in another order just to finish the rest of that run. I don't know why I, I only got three. I only got three of them. I'm like, and right when I looked at them and I unpackaged them, I was like, I look at the year. I'm like, ah, 1996. I was like, that's that's fucking fourth grade Ryan right there. You know, I was like, oh, I should have just ordered them all. But whatever. The Scarlet Spider brought back a lot of memories too, especially because yeah. like you and I would talk about it in class and shit, and you would yeah. draw it. I just think he had just had, like, one of the most simple but dopest freaking costume designs I, ever. And, yeah, you know what I mean? And I, I love the fact that you could see his web cartridges. They were literally around his ankle. And I was like, damn, just in case, like, he's, like, hanging upside down and he just needs to grab a cartridge out of his foot. Cool, he got one. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's like, Scarlet Spider was great. Like, I've always wanted that hoodie. <laughs> I know. So did I. I mean, it's not groundbreaking comics. It's not, like, the best. But, like, I still have a love for them. You know what I mean? So I didn't care to, like... That stack of comics that I got in the mail yesterday made me so fucking happy. Like, more so than anything that I've been getting from the comic book store lately. I'm just like, oh, 
I want more. I just want to get more old Spider-Man comics because I just don't like. I even put in an order for the. You know how like Marvel's been doing those epic collections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I had the very first Spider-Man one. That's the Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. But I ordered the Todd McFarlane one, the one yeah. that has like the black costume. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that's that's it for Spider Man. We'll, you make me want to read more Spider Man. Like I feel like I should read a lot more Spider Man. Like I, okay, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it when we talk about Blue. Let's let's continue on. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so before we get into Spider Man Blue, you know, a couple cool announcements. Nothing too groundbreaking happening this week. Uh, just a couple. And that's bit- the, that's kind of a good thing when it comes to comics. Like if it's not extremely positive, it's either extremely negative. So when it's just like mellow like this, I actually appreciate it. Uh, for selfish reasons, I wish there was more so we had more to talk about, you yeah. know, but whatever, you know, like it's, it's yeah. good that there's no shit happening like in a negative way. But a couple cool things were number one was Eternals by Kieran Gillen and Asad Rivich. I got the press release emailed while I was at work on uh, Wednesday, I think. Mm-hmm. And I opened it and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I couldn't believe it because even Nick was like. I'm sure they're going to launch a new Eternals book. I was like, yeah, I don't know if they will. Kieran Gillen and Asad Rivich? Are you shitting me, dude? Well, like, that Asad, is a great yeah. fucking team. I mean, Kieran Gillen goes with saying, but Asad Rivich, dude, like, yes, Asad Rivich, that's a motherfucker right there. That, his art is just... <sighs> if you haven't seen Asad Rivich's art, then you're totally doing yourself a disservice. Well, you gotta, you gotta see it. Some of the best stuff I've seen, when, whether he's drawing Thor or the Uncanny X-Men or whatever. Like, it's freaking crazy. And freaking Karen Gillen is just absolutely killing it right now. Like, with a- anything he touches. He, he's like, once in future, die. He's also doing Ludocrats also, but I haven't read that. You, you know, I haven't read it either, but so, uh, some people have told me that they actually really like it. Yeah, I haven't really heard much about it, and... I'm re- like as of now, like Die is. I- I'm reading it in trades. I'm not reading it in single issue anymore because I just felt like I couldn't keep up juggling a book like that with a- reading a bunch of other stuff in between. I couldn't uh, retain the information issue to issue. But once a future and once a future the same. I think I I read up to issue six and then I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll wait and read it all arc to arc like I did with the first one. He's a great writer. I think the only thing he wrote I didn't like was his Iron Man run. I, I was not a fan of it. You know, I think it was okay. The first arc was good. But then after that, I'm like, uh, I just didn't like a lot of the changes he did. But I, I you know, I don't want to get into the negative about him. Didn't, but didn't, didn't he also do Angela? I, I don't know. I feel like he did Angela. Maybe he did. I'm not, too. I'm not 100%. But I'm very excited for Eternals. I just read the Eternals by Neil Gaiman and Romita Jr. Same. I loved that book. That book was great. And I didn't really know anything about Eternals going into it. Mm-hmm. So I'm fucking really excited to see what Kieran Gillen does. I, and I also re, uh, recently read Kieran Gillen's Young Avengers run, which was phenomenal too. So like, I have high hopes for this book. You know, I mean, I don't know much else about the book other than the creative team, but I'm mm-hmm. definitely excited to see what they bring to the table. I, I yeah. think it's going to be a hit. When I was reading um, Neil Gaiman and uh, JRJR's Eternals, like, I like the story, I like the plot and everything, but man, I just couldn't get past J.R. J.R.'s art in that one. I don't know if it was the coloring, I don't that, know. It's weird, because I <laughs> don't think it was bad in there. Really? I, I Dude, I was, was still, having, I was having I a rough time. I think still okay. I think it's based on who inks him. Maybe it was yeah. the coloring. I think it may be the coloring. I can see how that might have yeah. affected the way you read it. I think that that was still around the time he was doing Amazing Spider-Man, which for me was still... He was still kind of at the top, I yeah. think, of his oh, game. Yeah. Still good. Oh, wait. Kieran Gillen did do an Angela. Angela's Asgard's Assassin, Volume 1 by Kieran Gillen. Yeah, I mean, he also wrote some Thor, Loki. like So he's yeah. he's written a lot of great stuff for Marvel, and, and I think this is a great book for him to return to Marvel with. And now also this week, hell of a bomb job, dude, was Scott Snyder launching a fucking Kickstarter. Yeah. I was fucking uh, – I'm going to use this word, dude. I was fucking flabbergasted. You know, I mean, I, I, if there's ever a time to use it, this is the time to use that word. I fucking could not believe it, dude. Like, I know that big names are doing it. You know, Matt Kent and Jeff Lemire launched the Kickstarter a few, a couple months ago, I think, um, in the beginning of the pandemic or towards the end of the lockdown. And then, but Scott Snyder to launch this, I think is really dope. You know, it's cool what he's trying to do to kind of stay connected with his fans because there's no cons. And this is literally just... 
a special edition of the first issue, which will be in black and white, which is going to later be released through Image as a series. But he's doing this for the people that want to get in on the ground floor. You know, I think it's kind of cool because you won't be able to get this anywhere else. So it's going to be really, I don't know how collectible it'll be, but it will be a small print run. You won't be able to get it anywhere. It's an interesting way for him to launch his book. I mean, I think we're going to start to see this more with the uncertainty of the industry and distribution being kind of weird. You know, this is definitely a way for creators to make sure that the creative team can get paid, especially with the economy the way it is. And what I really love, I don't know if you read this part, he's not taking any money from the Kickstarter for himself. The money is Hell only yeah. going to the rest of the creative team, and it's going to go anything over what the production of the first book will cost will go into subsequent issues. I think that's amazing. I think that's it's awesome. so fucking awesome of him. Just another reason why he's, you know, one of my favorite writers, whether I have issues with some of the stuff he writes or not, which is very, uh, very minimal. I very, I very rarely have issues with him. He gave uh, us Jaro, bro. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I, I really love this. I love this model. I think it's fucking cool, especially for like, you know, the diehards that like these like special editions of stuff. Which yeah. I love. I love the behind the scenes. I got the hardcover edition. I didn't even I was, get the I immediately chose hardcover. I'm like, hell yeah, the hardcover's gonna be sick. Yeah, and I think the first uh, first day backers too got a little bit of a discount on it. But yeah, I think this is very cool. Very, very interesting that he chose to do this. I like that he's doing his new imprint and it kind of teases other creators he's working with for creator owned mm -hmm. stuff. I, I love the name, Best Jacket Press, which is a you know, he took two of his eldest son's names and kind of combined them to create that. Very um, excited for that. And I hope we see this with more creators, honestly. I'm definitely down to, to fun, like, um, creators Kickstarter stuff. Like, it's, it's just fun. It's literally just... It really gives us, as readers, the opportunity to see something completely unfiltered. You know what I mean? And yeah. un untouched by big publishers. I mean, I feel like Image is kind of like that already. Yeah. But even though, like, they, they, there's still a process in which... Things have to get approved before they can go to print. Like, you know what I mean? But, like, as far as, like, you know, Kickstarter stuff, it's like, all right, let's, let's see what writers can do given the 100% creative freedom and given the backing of the actual fans. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I've said to some of the creators that I've talked to that were in the midst of their Kickstarters, for me, it's like, it's cool because you kind of, in a way, get to interact with them, right? You feel yeah. a part of the process. You don't mm -hmm. feel that way with when you go to the... I mean, you go to the shop, you buy a comic. Okay, cool. You feel like you're supporting the book in a way, right? But with yeah. this, like, you are really supporting it. You're helping bring these projects to life. Even if it's just 40 bucks or it's 10 bucks, like, you're helping their ideas come to life a little bit, you know? Like, mm -hmm. whether it's a Scott Snyder or somebody like David Pepos, who's a, a maybe a lesser-known uh, creator, right? Not as yeah. well-known. and Or my brother, who's just starting out. So, like... Killed it, by the way. Yeah, so these Kickstarters just really are just, like, I'm, I'm finding more and more unique stuff, too. Like, if you really search through the Kickstarter, like, because I have the app, so, like, I'll, every once in a while, I'll just go through and see what new comic stuff is there. And I've discovered some pretty cool stuff. You know, you'll have anthologies and stuff like that, and it's a cool way to kind of learn about creators as well. I hope we continue to see some really dope fucking well-known creators do shit like this, because I'll, I'll back them every time. If it's, like... You, if you tell me Jason Aaron is going to do this and, and just, just the first issue only through Kickstarter, but like a hardcover like Snyder's doing, like, I'll do it every time, dude, because I love that shit. I'll back anything, Jason Aaron. I, well, speaking of Jason Aaron, did you know he wrote Ghost Rider? Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm looking for the trade right now. Not right now, at this moment, but I need to read it. <laughs> I, I, I do, too. I read part of it, but I, I don't have the whole run. I think I found, like, a couple of the singles, and, like, I'm just going to get rid of them so I can get the trade because, like... I'm not going to go hunt down the single issues at this yeah. point. When they have them collected, I think there's two volumes, two books. Okay. We have them at we have them at CP. Looks like I'm going to stop by because I, I know for sure we don't have them at ours at our arsenal. So I think they're available to order though. I'll, I'll see if I can get them through Diamond. If I can't get them through Diamond, I'll probably come see. I feel, uh, we just got like the first volume back in stock, so they have to. Oh be really? Available. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah. that's 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 a good thing. So you know what I did? I finished Descender this week. How's it's that? a Fuck, bro. Jeff Lemire, bro. He's... Except for Berserker. Like, uh... <laughs> everything I've read from Jeff Lemire thus far has been, yeah. like, just utterly heartbreaking. 
Yeah, I know. That dude <laughs> like, fucking knows how to pull on the heartstrings. You think Tom Taylor does, dude, but Jeff Lemire does it in some other kind of way, man, that just, like... For me, like, I get emotionally invested in his characters. Like, Oh, I agree. Sweet, like, I Sweet agree. Tooth. I'm starting Sweet Tooth. Yeah. I, I, got, I got book one. So. Yeah, you should leave a box of tissues next to you. <laughs> you should yeah. have, just be ready to fucking get sad at parts. But it's it's a phenomenal series, dude. I've read it twice, so. And, oh, wait, how do you feel about uh, Sweet Tooth and Black Label? I wish it wasn't coming out. Really? Uh, Mostly because I'm trying to not support DC too much. And I don't like that it's rebranded as Black Label. I also don't like that Snyder's American Vampire conclusion is going to be under Black Label. That's just like the OCD in me. Like, I don't want to look at it on my shelf and it's like Vertigo, 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 Black Label. I'll get it because I love Lemire and I love Sweet Tooth. So I am excited for it in that respect. But I also wish it wasn't. Because it's not fucking Black Label, dude. It's a Vertigo book. I, I just, yeah. like, I, it will never be anything other than a Vertigo book to me, so. Right, right, right. Yeah, it looks dope. Like, I think at this point, that book and the American Vampire, when it comes out too, those will be the last probably DC books on my pull at that time. Because everything else will have ended. Question is ending this week. I, yeah. I've talked about Flash. When Williamson's off, I'm, I'm off the book too. And I think that's September is the last month that he'll be on the book. So you're gonna be you're gonna be mad at me. I, I put another DC title on my poll. Why would I be mad? I'm not. Mad. I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know. What but okay. It? Uh, oh, oh, it's just for as long as uh, her run is. But I got. I put uh, Marco Tamaki's uh, Wonder Woman on my. Poll. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been able to read it because I stopped getting the advances from DC for mm -hmm. whatever reason. And I mean, maybe it's all the hate I spew. I don't know. I'm <laughs> listening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we sold. We sold out her first issue so i haven't been able to read it i'll probably just i guess at this point like i don't really want the second print and oh no we had the second print of the first one right and then we uh -huh. didn't have her second issue so i'm like well fuck this dude I'm not, I'm not gonna chase after this i'll just wait till the trade comes out but i'm not mad at you for that dude please support mariko tamaki dude yeah you know no, no. I mean? like, it's, it's it's dude it's pretty good there's a splash page where she's like running on the freeway barefoot jumping mm -hmm. over a car <laughs> like, if that isn't the most Wonder Woman thing I've ever seen in my life, that, you know, <laughs> it has to be, like, pretty close. But it's pretty good, dude. I enjoy the writing. Um, like, I'm a little confused as to it jumping back and forth between, like, where it is exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure, like you said, like, last week, like, everybody writes for the trade. It's, it's pretty good, dude. Like, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I will be honest with you. I feel like this is the first time I've picked up a Wonder Woman single issue. Yeah, I'm not mad at you for that. But I, I do think if, if you're enjoying this... Mm -hmm. Go read Greg Rucka's Wonder Woman. Oh, that's already on my list of to be read. I'm putting it out there right now, dude. Sometime down the line, let's read book one, Greg Rucka. Okay, cool. After you suggested, uh, what do you call Lazarus to me by, by Greg Rucka, um, I was like, man, this is pretty freaking cool. And then I knew, I've always known that he's written, like, uh, he's written for Wonder Woman. So now that's just piqued my interest. I'm going to put, I, I put that on my list. So hell yeah, let's do Wonder Woman by, by Greg Rucka. You've read Gotham Central, right? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, dude, dude you, you know how behind I am on DC stuff. Don't sit oh. here and freaking, like, act like you don't know. <laughs> I know, no, I know, but this is so, like, so different from, I don't know, I just... I, is, is this essential DC reading? It's in my top five DC stories of all time. All right, hold on. Freaking uh, Gotham Central, huh? They did an episode on, on the Marauders, dude, but let's fucking do one on here. I don't care. I, that was <laughs> phenomenal. Greg Rucka and Ed Brubaker together. Oh, word? That's yes. That's dope. 40 issue run it's about the gotham pd and bat he's like not even in the book he's like there in shadow if anything oh but i want a eisner and a harvey look at this Ooh, Dude. impressive come on bro if you never oh, read another dc book in your fucking life that needs to be the book i'm putting it on my on my okay. list there boom all right cool oh yeah gotham central book one in the line of duty there we go there we go baby Shit, should we just get into Spider-Man Blue, or do you, is there anything else that happened this week you want to talk about real quick? No, I mean, aside from the DC fandom stuff, apparently Ben Affleck is coming back to be Batman in a Flash solo movie, and people are thinking it's Flashpoint. I mean, Can obviously, I, it might be Flashpoint, you know what I mean? I mean, I I didn't hate Affleck as Batman, so, I, I mean, Neither did I. I'll take him. I'll take him, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I'm cool with Robert Pattinson, too. I think the logo looks dope. They, they dropped that logo this week. And the costume, kind of hard to tell with Jim Lee drawing it black against red. You can't really, like, see the intricacies of Jim the Lee costume. can make any costume look dope, dude. 
Jim Lee can draw me in a white beater and basketball short to make me look dope. Like, <laughs> so, I, mean, I love that. But yeah, so I, I mean, like, I'm all for that. I'm I'm all for Michael Keaton coming back as like a Batman Beyond type Batman, and I'm down for Batfleck too. Bring it, dude. I don't I don't care. Fucking DC multiverse. Maybe that's okay. the only way they can fucking succeed is if they just do like a multiverse aspect of their fucking characters. I think that would be the best approach. Like if they approach it like a like an actual multiverse, because they already kind of teased it. You know when they did both flashes in the Flash series. Yeah. So. They have JDM as Thomas Wayne, Ben yeah. Affleck as Batman, as like, you know, older Batman. Then they have Rotten Pattinson as younger Batman. And then, you know, by some strange twist of fate, they give us Batman Beyond with freaking uh, Michael Keaton as Old Man Bat. I'd be 100% all for that. I feel like that would be kind of like their saving grace. And to be honest with you, as far as like individual like casting, I think the castings for each individual character was great. Like, you know, I thought Jason Momoa was a great, ba- uh, great Aquaman. I thought freaking... Gal Gadot. At first, I had my reservations, but Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman was a great idea. Like, you know what I mean? I I didn't like Ezra Miller as Flash. I didn't like his amalgamation of all the different personalities of Flash characters, which is what I felt like he did. He didn't act like Barry. He didn't act like Wally. And he didn't act like Bart Allen, which was Kid Flash and Pulse and became Flash. So it was just like too all over the place for me. I'm not saying he was bad at acting. And like, if you don't know anything about the Flash, maybe you can like that character in the movie. But for me, like, he's not Flash, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, at all. He just, he didn't stick to just one personality. If you're Barry Allen, you're not, you're not all over the place. You don't have that. Like, you work for the fucking, the, yeah, hot, the police bro. department, dude. Like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude. They would have kicked your ass out of the department years ago if you were acting like that. You're not, you look like you're on fucking meth. You know, like, <laughs> calm the fuck down, dude. Um, so, I, but other than that, Affleck is Batman, I, I'm, I'm down for. I think the multiverse aspect is the only way that you make it all work. Because I think, it, you know, that Crisis on Infinite Earths, that, yes, it was a little cheesy, but, dude, they fucking connected everything in that crossover on TV. And they had the Swamp Thing from the DC Universe show. They had the Teen Titans. They had the, the, they had the fucking cartoon stuff, even, dude. So... That yeah. is where DC should fucking, like, really milk it because you have so many different people that have played Batman, too. You have so yeah. many people that have played Superman. So yeah. this is a way to make it all work. No, this is and, right. Like, you don't have to explain continuity at that point. You know what I mean? Like, but we'll see. So Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man Blue. Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale. Right. I'm going to let you take this up. Dude, you're going to fucking head this up because you haven't read it this first time, and I have a lot to say, so... Needless to say, like, I, I, I mean, Jeff Loeb may be somewhat of a trash bag, but, like... <laughs> like uh, yeah, he is, yeah. 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 But, like, but you know what? Like, I'm going to separate this. I don't care if people get mad at me because, quite frankly, like, you know, I love Long Halloween. I love uh, Daredevil Yellow. I love Hulk Gray. But Spider-Man Blue and Captain America White are the only two that I haven't read up until now. And I had no idea what I was getting into because, you know me, very anti-synopsis. That's going to be the name of my supervillain. If I was ever to become a fucking supervillain, I'd be like the anti-synopsis. But anyway, (laughs) so I read it and it was great. I mean, I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't know, as as far as all the color series, like I really didn't know what what I was getting into. You know what I mean? And um, I really, this one really stood out to me because it was essentially a Gwen Stacy story. And it wasn't like the actual, you know, the tragedy of Gwen Stacy, but it was like, it was the buildup as to why he loved Gwen Stacy. I had no idea where this was going, but immediately, once you open the book, boom, it, it's, it's, it's a recorded love letter to Gwen Stacy. And she'd already passed, and this is kind of like Pete's coping mechanism as to how he deals with the grief, right? So, you know, going into it, I thought it was going to be just a Gwen Stacy story, and then Boom, throw MJ in the mix. So it was like the whole, I, I really liked that, like how he talked about both of them and yeah. how he didn't know what and where his feelings were going and how honest he was both with himself, just only with himself and honest he was with Gwen Stacy talking to her post-mortem. It was great, dude. Um, I miss good stories of Peter. You know what I mean? Spider-Man stories are great. The reason why Spider-Man stories are great is because there's a very thin line between Peter and Spider-Man. As opposed to like, you know, like when you have someone like Batman, it's like, boom, there's Bruce Wayne and then there's Batman. But no, mm-hmm. it's like Peter and Spider-Man are literally the same person. And th- this is what I've always appreciated about it. It's like, you know, it was no alter ego about it. It was literally stories like this is what makes Spider-Man so relatable because Spider-Man is like your everyday hero. 
He's like your everyday guy. You know, with the whole Spider-Verse thing, you know, anyone can put on the mask, right? And it, it, that applies with Spider-Man so well because he's broke, like a lot of us. <laughs> like, right. he, he struggles with just keeping up regular relationships and a job. And he's just always out to, to try and do the right thing, which most people do and, most, and some people don't. This, this story in particular like, really shows the very thin line between Peter and Spider-Man. And I loved it, dude. And, you know, it goes without saying that, you know, Tim Sale's art in this is absolutely phenomenal. I really, really enjoyed the amount of wit that came with Jeff Loeb's script writing for Spider-Man. But it didn't have that old school, too much of an old school feel where the jokes were super corny. You know what I mean? It's a good Spider-Man story that I feel like everybody should read because, you know, everybody knows about the tragedy of, of Gwen Stacy and... This, this gives you a really good in-depth look of how Peter felt during all of it. This is one of the best, in my opinion, best modern-day Spider-Man stories. I'll, I'll even say in the past 30 years. It's at the top for me. It's yes. phenomenal. Like I said earlier, Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, for me, like, I love th that duo. What they create, I know that they, there's some strife between them now. We don't need to get into that. But what they've created in all of their stories, you feel a sense of nostalgia but it's modern at the same time. It's mm -hmm. just what they convey. They get down to the core of the character and, and the other characters, all the characters in their stories, they get down to the core and they just, they have such a good understanding of who they are. And it's just presented wonderfully, dude. These six issues take place between issue 40 and 49 of Amazing mm -hmm. Spider-Man. So you see that scene when Mary Jane makes her debut Mary Jane was always mentioned, but never seen. They were always trying to hook Peter and MJ up. Aunt May and Aunt Anna, who's MJ's aunt. And, oh, she seems nice. <laughs> and, and um, you know, like, it even you even see that at the end of issue one. Like, we see uh, MJ's shadow as she's coming up to the door, and Peter's not there. At the end of issue two, you have the famous scene. Face yeah. it, Tiger, you hit the jackpot. I love that line. It's one of, in my opinion, it's one of the most well-known Spider-Man lines to any diehard Spider-Man fan. Yeah, no, um, no. Fate, that I, go get him, Tiger. Yeah, so I like the way Tim Sale also reinterpreted some of John Romita's art because he, he updated it. You know, in the original, MJ's got like a coat in her hand or whatever, but he, like, and, and I know I say this a lot, but I love the way he draws women. You know, yeah. there's something in their eyes that he, the way he conveys their it's emotion. Very, they're it's very attractive, whether it be sad or happy yeah. or whatever. The eyes, the eyes have it, bro. The eyes and the mouth are just very, always very expressive in his art. And this catapulted him to one of my favorite Spidey artists. When I read it originally, I've read this multiple times. I love this story. I just, I love his interpretations of the characters. He, he definitely, it's like Romita and Ditko and he merged both of them. Yeah. And created some new type of style. Because while it does look like Tim Sale, he also, you can tell he's honoring them. A another thing, you know, it's called Spider Man Blue. There is blue on Everywhere. every single page. Every Everywhere. single page has blue on it. You'll see like blue overtones, like like shaded everywhere. The rooms, what they're wearing. Every the, thought bubble of Peter's yeah. is blue. You know? Yeah. So I thought that was a cool little, interesting little technique that they did. I love that there's a few double. A double page spreads to open up each issue. So you got like, there's one where Peter's coming to the apartment for the first time, right? Spider-Man at the newsstand reading a newspaper upside down. Like, it just feels like such a classic story. Like I said, it gets down to the core of who Spider-Man is. I mean, people nowadays writing Spider-Man need to fucking, maybe you read this book so that you can write a better Spider-Man story. Because I keep trying to read new Spider-Man. I'm just not feeling it, dude. And I don't know if it's because I'm stuck in my old ways or they just don't really truly get what makes Spider-Man work. Like, and that's more what I feel. The relationship between, you know, Peter and Gwen Stacy, in the large scheme of things, like, I don't know how long they were actually together, right? Because if this was issues 40 through 49, they weren't together until maybe the end of this. And she died in issue 121 or 122. Yeah. So, like, this is his first love, man. But everybody yeah. know everybody knows that Peter Parker and Mary Jane, like, that is the relationship that the, the mass public knows as the yeah. relationship. It's Peter and MJ. You talked about how basically talking to Gwen Stacy, he also mentions MJ. And even as he's mentioning her, he feels kind of, like, awkward doing it. Like, it's like as if he 
is cheating on her by yeah. talking about MJ, but he's not though. You know what I mean? Like she's been, she's been dead, and I really loved this because like I haven't read all the old Spider Man stories, so seeing like how MJ and Gwen were both going after Peter, and they were getting kind of catty, like when he was sick in bed, and yeah, they both that was great. And they both <laughs> How's your were... acting career, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, dude. Just that little snide remark. And, and then, like, you know he doesn't want to leave that situation, dude, because he's not used to this attention. He's fucking – he's always been a nerd. Like, they've always kind of, like, ragged on him, right? And then yeah. and then he sees Vulture out the window. He's like, motherfucker. You know, so he has to basically deny both of them and Son go, of this. I gotta go, go. Sa- go save uh, the city. I don't know how else to say it other than, like, this is such a small window. It's only six issues. Yeah. But this is the perfect encapsulation of what Spider-Man is. Within yeah, these no, this issues, is... you know who Peter Parker is. You know who Gwen Stacy is. You know who Mary Jane is. You know who Harry Osborn is. You so know, you know who, who, these who Flash characters. Thompson is. Yeah, and and I like that too. You know, it kind of ends with Flash saying he's going to join the army, and we yeah. all know where Flash Thompson ends up. You know, in comics, I think it, maybe you don't know he ends up becoming Agent Venom down the line. You know, like, he ends up learning who Peter Parker is eventually. Here he does it. But he was always a fan of Spider-Man. And I always thought that was an interesting dynamic that they had. Because he fucking couldn't stand Peter Parker. He made fun of him. He bullied him. But yeah. then here he is, a huge, like, Spider-Man's number one fan. Biggest fan. You know what and I mean? So it's like... Literally joined the army because of Spider-Man. Right. Just Like, that. it's crazy. It was always like, you were, like, in on an inside joke, kind of. You know, yeah. like, knowing that with Peter Parker. That narration, you know, like you can, you don't see Peter's face as he's narrating and he's talking to Gwen, yeah. but you feel the emotion behind it, and that's yeah. something that you always feel in these color books is emotion, right? Blue, mm-hmm. it's called blue, not just the color blue, but the feeling of blue being yeah. blue, and yeah, like you said, like the whole the whole overtone of it is blue, and the thing is, like once you realize that he's talking. To Gwen Stacy via tape recorder off top you know it's just like oh man <laughs> like that was my initial feeling when I was like when I found out that was the whole way of the narration how it was going I was like oh man Pete <laughs> you'll be all right bro yeah like and then there, there is this over the whole overlying sadness because like aside from you know it being a story about how much he cares about Gwen Stacy how much he loved Gwen Stacy but it was also like how much of a separation between of him having a normal life him being so separated away from a normal life that he can't even deal with these things like a normal person could. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what if there was drama in, like, in a regular person's life between two women? He can't even properly approach it the way a normal person could because he had to go and run off and save the city every time, every time a situation like that had to occur. There's a reoccurring line where it's bad before the good. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But even then, like, his good moments were always few and far. He was always getting beat up. I think when he talked about... The lizard, uh, when he talked about Doc Connors and how his wife always stood by him despite that horrible secret. Like, and you, can, you can feel like a sense of envy in that, in, in how he said it, you know what I mean? Because Peter you, you can't even have a chance to make a relationship with a woman because, like, with Doc Connors, of course, they got married and had the kid, and then he became the lizard. But with Pete, he's already Spider-Man. So I kind of sense like a feeling of envy that he can't even experience that, in, like, the way the lizard would experience that you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and it's really crazy and then you know at the end of the book you know, how, when, when everything kind of like wraps along like like the way mj approach like you know mj kind of approaches everything is very respectful there's no ill will towards what peter's doing you know what i mean no i i loved it that line of her like tell gwen i said hi i was like oh oh that, like, that got yeah, me like that, right in the heart dude, dude you know that I mean? got me like, too oh, dude this is my first time reading it too so i'm just like oh all the feels, bro. All I the still feels. get them, dude. I, I've read it for like over at least four times. I still get it when I read this story, and that's that tells you something of how powerful it is, you know. I, I just love, I, I love like the, the big one page slash pages that Tim Sale does because yeah. they're so poignant. They're so poignant. Mm-hmm. They're so like iconic in their own way, and oh, man, it's just it's great, dude. Like you're you're right. This is this is definitely one of the more, one of the best Spider Man uh, stories I've read. And it's not, it's not so much it's an old, it's a new story. It's just not, a, not even so much a retelling, but a more in-depth look at how that played out. Like, and it's, 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 it's beautiful, dude. It's, the art is phenomenal. I will go so far as to say this. I might like this six-issue run a little more 
that I like Long Halloween. I don't know if it's because it's Spider-Man and Spider-Man is always just like how oh, special yeah, for me. I've never, I've never thought about that. You know, I think um, if I had to pick, yeah, I'd, I'd probably pick this. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, I mean, this and then like the art, dude, the sequential art in this is phenomenal. Dude, Tim um, Sell's pacing and, and uh, panel structure yeah. is, it's insane, dude, how good he is. Like, he fucking, the dynamic shots that we see, like Spidey fighting Vulture in the air, or and then the quiet moments, you know, and Steve Buccioletto's coloring, dude, we can't forget about that. Like, yeah. his coloring is phenomenal. It is such an integral part of this story. You know, coloring can make or break a book for me. If you like, have bad coloring, imagine that with a bad colorist. Yeah. I mean, look, like, look how we were talking about the Eternals, how, yeah. like, I think it was the coloring. I'm not saying I don't like J.R. J.R.'s art, but, like, I, I something about it, that particular run, and I, I honestly think it was the coloring. It was too bright for me for it to be a uh, John Romita Jr. art, you know what I mean? And, yes, I, and like, and with this, dude, I'm, I'm a sucker for black contrast. Like, the, the way, you know, the use of shadows, like, yes. there is no negative space, and that's what I love. Like, everything, everything is filled with color. The only things that, like, are blank spaces are literally just uh, caption bubbles. Like I said, I think I like this a little bit better than The Long Halloween. Not only that, this is just filled with action. Like, that splash page between the two vultures, Dude, yes. <laughs> that shit was crazy. That shit was just absolutely crazy. If there's any I iconic battles for me, I mean, Doc Octopus is like obviously an easy one, but right. like Spider Man versus the Vulture in midair is like the best freaking one of the some of the best scenes I've seen out of comic books, no matter who draws it. Oh, yeah. You know, you have New York, big city skyscrapers. So you, mm -hmm. so you see literally a spider and a vulture fighting it out in midair. Of course, yeah. that's how it happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. I love it. And the, the fact that there's two vultures in this, great. <laughs> yeah. And I love that he had Craven as, like, that, that guy in the shadows the whole time. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it ends up not being some, like, big revelation. But I've always kind of been partial to Craven for some reason. I don't know why. So yeah. I really like that. And that full page after he battles Craven, like, towards the end of the book, the full page shot of Peter and Gwen Stacy. When she's like, will you be my Valentine? I loved it, dude. And it's just such a, it looks like it's an iconic image, but it's new. We've never yeah. seen this before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, dude, like just Tim Sale, like he's just something else, man. He's such a master storyteller through his visuals. Not to say that we don't need Jeff Loeb. To me, that's, that's a sign of a great artist when like you take all the dialogue out and you can you can get exactly what's going on. There's yeah. even that page of like the beginning of the Valentine's Day part or the going away party for Flash, right? When Peter opens the door and then everybody just starts throwing their coats at him. Like he's the coat guy or something, you know? Like and you don't even see his mouth, you just see his eyes. I can't say it enough, man. This really is. This is my I, I think it top five Spider-Man stories of all time. I did say top five of modern day in the video that I did, but mm. this is all time for me, all time would be this this story, dude. No, it's great. I'm so glad I read it. <laughs> Let's just say yeah, that. I'm so I, glad I, I brought it up. I'm glad that, that we read This is uh, definitely a quick change of pace, especially after reading Descender. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's like it's sad, but it's, it leaves on a happy note still, right? Like, yeah. It's about him being sad, but you're left with such – if you're a Spider-Man fan, dude, I don't know how you can read this and not feel so happy afterwards because it just leaves you feeling like – it gives you all the feels, dude. You, you feel all the emotions – but at the end, it to me, it's happiness. Yeah. You know, because it, ends, it, it, it ends with that photo, right, of him. You know, and, like, you just see, like, it's that, that was a really happy time in his life. But it was also a source of one of his greatest defeats. He, had, he lost Uncle Ben because, you know, when he first became Spider-Man and he kind of ignored a criminal, which is why he became a superhero. And then he loses Gwen Stacy, the two greatest losses in his life. And neither one he was able to stop. So, like, this will, this is something that is still with him to this day. Like, writers still touch on this moment in his life. Not the moment of, like, what takes place in this book, but the, the loss, I mean, of Gwen Stacy. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. What's great about it is, uh, you know, I mean, I haven't read some of these older, older issues. I have my issues with these older issues. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's mostly in dialogue. <laughs> and it's like, this really provides something more than oh his girlfriend died that's why he is the way he is it's more like yeah his girlfriend died but it really was 
the building block as to why he is the hero he is. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it makes stories like Back in Black that much better. It makes, because it's, it's about the people he cares about and how he doesn't want to lose them and doesn't want to lose things and him not do everything he can to make sure that it doesn't happen. Peter's great. If, if I'm going to choose another Marvel character, like second to Wolverine, it, it would have to be Peter. <laughs> Peter, like, like, I'm sorry, dude, but what? Peter's great. Peter's like one of the most relatable characters I've ever seen. Like even after, after he gets rich and, you know, Parker Industries and all that stuff. Dude, Spider-Man's <laughs> always been one of my favorites. That's why yeah. it's like, and then I read stories like this and it just makes me, I'm Love happy. More. But I like, yeah, and then I'm angry. Like, why can't they fucking continue to make good Spider-Man comics? I just like, I just don't understand. I don't know if it's is editorial. They know how to make a good Spider-Man movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Marvel Studios, like, I think they did a great job. The Ultimate Spider-Man line, I I thought that was great, but it's like for some reason they just and see Ultimate Spider-Man. That's another one. Just like you know, like Peter Parker dies saving the city. Yeah. Like, he, like why? Because he can't not do everything he can like you know what i mean like, like because of gwen stacy because of uh, uncle ben he doesn't want to lose and not not saying he i'm not saying lose a fight but he doesn't want to lose people like, i know and, spider-man's one of the best for me it's you say it's spider-man wolverine for me it's spider-man daredevil those are my my top daredevil two. would be three those daredevil are my top would be two three. yeah those are my top two marvel characters i have to say and i have the collection that has you know the daredevil spider-man and hulk i i i too haven't read captain america white um, mm. But Daredevil Yellow is also one of my favorite Daredevil stories. Oh, there's a lot more great Daredevil stories for me to pick from than there are Spider-Man. Daredevil's been the most consistent Marvel character in the history of Marvel. Yeah. So, I mean, and going back to like, I'll just, let's just go back to Frank Miller. I mean, there's great runs before too, but you just look at Frank Miller on and it's like, Jesus, dude, like just run after run. And it's not just like a, a one arc. It's like multiple issues. But yeah, overall... Anybody listening, if you haven't read Spider-Man Blue, I know this one might be a little bit harder to come across because it's not the trade is not in print. I don't know about the omnibus that collects all four of the color books, but if you can find it, I highly recommend it. If you're mad about what you're reading in Spider-Man now, read this and it'll make you feel better. So, so much better. I'm just uh, never going to understand, like throughout the course of the history of Spider-Man, I'm just never going to understand how the Osborns' hair's, hair works. Like, I know, dude. I've always wondered that too, man. Is it like, cornrows? Like, I don't... Is it sideways? Like, uh, are they waves? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, they are they gingers? Yeah, you know, I want to see them do that in a fucking Spider-Man movie. I want to see that hair in the fucking movie so I can see what it looks like in real life. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, yeah, I don't... I, I want to see what that... I wish I knew what that hair looked like in real life because it just doesn't make sense to me on page. And they continue to draw the character like that. So it's like, it's they've never changed it from the yeah. fucking 60s. Ever. I mean, that's the least of the worries of the Spider-Man comics. You know what I like too? Uh, what I really like the um, freaking Tim Sale the way he the way he sets up sets up scenes. How he always does outside shots first. So you see May Parker's house. You see New York. You see the apartment that Peter and uh, what's his name get. You know what I mean? It, the, the outside shots. Like well, you actually know the, that sets... that one. You you see uh, Harry's eye. Like you see, you're seeing it from Peter's vision. I think right. Yeah. No, but you, but you know what I mean. Like the setup shots. The, the yeah, setup yeah. shots are always shot. great. As far as like as far as Tim Sale, like even even back to his Batman stuff. His Batman stuff are always setup shots. It's cinematic in its own way. I just freaking love it. There's just so so many good panels here. So many good panels. It looks amazing. Everybody, go read this shit. It's fucking awesome. So uh, before uh, we get out of here, uh, what what else have you been reading this week? I know you said you finished Descender. Uh, I finished Descender this weekend. What else did I read? It, 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 it's all turning into a blur at this point. I know. About what I'm reading. I feel the same way. <laughs> I got I got I got to jump start like the freaking memory the memory banks. Oh, I started reading Invincible. Omnibus uh, two. Second one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And dude, oh, man, so good. <laughs> So, I know. Oh, I, I finished. I finished the book one of Deadly Class. I freaking messaged you immediately. Like, dude, it's getting crazy. Oh yeah, I know. I know. I like know. Fucking... the the second half of that first like large collected book is just all tension. Everything about it is all tension. You don't know who's coming for him. You don't know how it's gonna happen. And then you know Marcus is just getting thrown shit. And then he's also throwing shit back. Like. 
it's it's all this craziness that's happening. Like this fool is just fucking wilding out. You see his downward spiral, and then boom! At the end, Master Lin is like, "Kill the rats." <laughs> I know. Hey, that's that's why Nick said that to you, by the way, too. Oh, you're finally reading good books because I was like, I told him after you messaged me about the Deadly Class. Yeah, that's why he said that. And I was like, dude, I've been trying to get Dylan to read some of this stuff for years. I'm just happy he's doing it. I'm not going to be like, oh, what fucking took you so long? I'm just happy he's doing it. Yeah, no, it's – like I'm looking back at my uh, on my, my trade paperback reads as far as like um, all my all my good reads. Aside from Injustice, it's all been indies. I know, dude. Look at my, If you look at mine too, it's like – Yeah. It's, it's pretty much just indie right now. I mean, I think – I'll tell you what I read this week. I read uh, Zot. By Scott McCloud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, you know, it was interesting, I guess. The guy that wrote Understanding Comics, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. The, one of the biggest books in the history of comics, right? Because, I mean, even Alan Moore said that that's an essential book for anybody that wants to make comics. Uh, but So this was his creator-owned book he did in the eight, late 80s. I also read Shade the Changing Man, which was an early Vertigo book. That was kind of weird. Definitely had the Vertigo feel to it. That came out in like 1990. I've seen individual issues of Shades of Changing Man, and man, it's, it like just covers alone makes it look freaking weird. But yeah. also, if you look, if you had no idea what Sandman was and you saw Sandman covers, you'd think they were weird too. So true. <laughs> and then I read like a couple more indie stuff. I read Besamina, which is dude, that shit left me feeling weird as fuck. I even had like two weird dreams that night, and I can only attribute it to that book because mm-hmm. usually if I read right before I go to like pass out, at least. That it's whatever the last thing on my mind is, right, will affect my fucking dream. So if I end up watching a little TV, it'll be – I usually have, like, no, no dream. But if it's a book, the book will completely infiltrate my, my dreams and shit. And this book, fucking – dude, I did not I did not like the way I felt. I, I don't want to get just, into the book. It's I, just very I've just, I've just been having, like, crazy vivid dreams anyway because, I, like, I recently stopped smoking weed. So it's, like, it's been crazy. Just absorb everything. Now I've just been having, like, weird-ass dreams, period. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I read the Bowie book finally. The that was cool. Michael yeah, Allred's that? art, like that shit, was pretty dope. I mean, I don't know what I didn't know what to expect story wise. I didn't read the back. Mm-hmm. I just got it because I like David Bowie. I wish I was listening to some Bowie while reading it. I think that would have heightened the experience. But it was it was a beautiful book. I just kind of talks about his life. It was the way it was presented was interesting. It was like I wasn't like totally like oh my god this is the best because i don't know a lot about bowie either but it was definitely interesting to see how he started and and then kind of where he ended up so that was cool and then oh, nice. yeah I, I think i read a couple of the books that came out this week i don't need to be honest i don't even remember what came out i got decorum again but like i said i think i think i'm already this deep in i'm just gonna i'm just gonna wait until freaking it's all done oh you know what i read thor what? Oh yeah, that was that was good. That was good. I don't. It was good. I, I okay. Look, I'm not gonna ruin it for Abby, anybody. Well, it, this is gonna come out Tuesday, so just fucking ruin it. Who if you cares? haven't read it by Tuesday, look, dude. When he made the the Asgardian throne room out of the helmet of Galactus, that was bro. dope. <laughs> that was dope. But fucking Kate's, dude. Kate's just goes like so off the wall with his fucking ideas. I, I didn't dislike it. I just well, it, it got ruined for me too because I kind of fucking you know Ed talks with nick sometimes about books that he flips through mm-hmm. like he, he drops them off at the other two stores first and then we yeah. get laugh and he's like out there and i so like i heard him start talking about thor so i started like talking out loud to myself like ah like making noises <laughs> you know what i mean so that i couldn't hear but i still fucking heard so he fucking dropped the bomb about what thor did to galactus and i'm like god damn it dude like and i've told him before like i don't want books spoiled for me i'm in the back and, I, and he talks loud, so, like, I could hear everything he was saying. And it's just like, <laughs> God damn it. Dude. He's done that with mul- multiple of the X books that have come out. He's spoiled. I don't know. He's spoiled a lot of books for me. And, like, I have to keep saying, like, dude, I, I still like to be surprised in comics. You know, like, I don't read the fucking spoilers online, you know? Yeah. Like, I, but, yeah, I, I think it's cool. I'm interested to see where he takes it. That final splash page was what the fuck. I don't even know what that means kind of deal. Was it like Marvel Zombies and then there was a black gauntlet? <laughs> well, Thanos has Null's gauntlet. Ah. That's what that was, I think. Gotcha. Tony Cates is the Zach, is a Scott Snyder of Marvel. <laughs> I think he sticks the landing a little bit better, though, for those uh, like crazy stories, though. 
Yeah. Not to say that he's I don't I'm not saying he's a better writer, but I think that this is more his cup of tea kind of deal. Like he can write a really crazy story that you're like, what like fucking silver surfer with Thor's hammer battling Thanos at the end of time deal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just think he deals with those stories better than Snyder. I think Snyder's better with the small character studies and uh yeah. definitely horror. Shit like that, but yeah, you know, I, you, I you know what I really appreciate about this, like this is just, and this is this is absolutely insignificant, but it's just like it's okay. It's a Silver Surfer scene, right? When he's when he like flies into the throne room of Asgard, right? And then like the his board turns into steps. <laughs> oh yeah. It turns his steps just so he can walk down. I, 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 I don't know. There's something about that that I love. Like you know, I feel like not a lot of people have been utilizing the board as like a malleable thing it's just always yeah. in a solid board like lately. i love so I'm like yeah donny cates uh, depiction of um of silver surfer is is amazing and i, I will I, go i will i will reiterate this and just in case people haven't heard me say it before but silver surfer black was my choice for 2019's best freaking comic that shit was fucking amazing yeah so, i totally see why you say that like yeah it's so good so good yeah. <laughs> middle west uh, volume three comes out this week i'm gonna get that I'm waiting for the hardcover. I don't know <laughs> that it's coming out. <laughs> I can't, I, I'm assuming at this point that it's coming out. And well, I've read the first two, so like at this point, I'm like, you know what? I can wait a little bit longer for the third book. Yeah, I have a feeling they'll release it as a hardcover. I don't see why they wouldn't. It sold really well. It was mm -hmm. really well received. Mm -hmm. I think maybe. I mean, I think that, yeah, because they did the I Hate Fairyland hardcover. So I think Scotty Young would do a hardcover of this for sure. I can't wait. I gotta read it. It's yeah, and then, you know, this week, I kind of touched on it. The, what I'm excited for is the conclusion to the question series. Mm -hmm. I also, I don't think I have too much on my pull. I got a Mercy 5 oh. and a Texas Blood. Oh, yeah, that Texas Blood's out, new issue. X-Men also, and then the yeah. Daredevil Annual. I think the Daredevil Annual might be the thing I'm excited for the most, though, to be honest with you. Cause is it Zagarski? It, yeah, dude, I don't know. The tease for it was like one more day. It was kind of like, you know, what they did with Spider-Man when he, when he, they ended the marriage. So yeah. I don't know what this means. I don't know if it's just like a red herring and they're just, he's just fucking trolling all of us, which seems like a Zadarsky thing to do. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, so I don't know, but I'm very excited for that book, you know, and I don't usually get that excited for annuals, but yeah. this one is by Zadarsky and same creative team. So I'm very stoked for that. Other than that, though, you know, new issue of Flash, which, you know, I'm Williamson's run's coming to an end, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, nothing really else is coming out. That's about it. Uh, next week, we have Jennifer, a.k.a. Comics Will Break Your Heart, um, on Instagram. She's joining us, and we're going to be reading Pretty Deadly Volume 1 by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios. Hey, Kelly Sue! Yeah. <laughs> I like that, dude. You should... <laughs> You, oh, you're hosting next week. I'm so, hosting next so week. You can, so you can do that when, when we show the book. But yeah, so I'm very excited to have her on the show. I love when we have our guests. I mean, I love talking just the two of us, but it's always nice to get a you know a third opinion in there. And it's going to – I think it might be the first time you're reading it. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, it is. First yes, time it you're is. reading it. So I think you're going to love it, especially as an artist. Just as an artist, you will really appreciate what Emma Rios does in that book. It's it's poetry, dude. It, that's the only way I can describe it. It's amazing. That'll be our book for next week. I, I don't have anything else unless you have any last... I think I do. Hold on. They just announced the Gotham Knights video game right now. Sorry. In Fandom? Oh, uh, on Fandom. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. All right. Well, dude. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about next week with this DC Fandom. Yeah, we will. All right, cool. So that this has been another episode of the Comic Lounge podcast. Thank you guys for listening and joining us today. If you if you like listening to us talk comics and want to hear more, make sure you give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. You can uh, drop your comments or suggestions down below. If not, you want to email us uh, your thoughts, maybe stuff you want us to talk about on the show, some books. You can email us at the Comic Lounge Pod at gmail.com, and those links will be down below for you guys. You can also follow Dylan the Dillbot on yeah. Instagram. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you're notified every time we drop a new one of these. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. Any place you're listening to podcasts, we're on there. You can also find us streaming on the comiclounge.com website. And on that note, we're out. Later, bud. Later.